Chapter 7 The Plan The next day, as soon as I arrived at school, I went to the gym to look for my watch. Fortunately, it was still there. At lunchtime, I took Sona and Paul to an empty table and started my story. I decided to get to the point immediately. Mr. Hans is an alien, I said. No, not again. Are you doing this on purpose? Because if you're not, you have a problem. Paul exclaimed angrily, I thought you wanted to stop all this. I thought you were ashamed of your behavior. First, Mr. Jan, now Mr. Hans, he continued, while Sona raised her eyebrows incredulously and suppressed a smile. I know I seem crazy, I said, feeling tears in my eyes, but I'm telling you the truth. I saw him with my own eyes. Please listen to me. I told them everything, from my mysterious sensation to the conversation between Mr. Hans, Clyreg, and the alien on the computer screen. Both my friends looked terrified and shocked. They finally believed me. Besides, I added, do you remember how he looked at the sun? It's incredible. I continued, he's green and his name is Clyreg. Other aliens are coming in a spaceship on Friday evening. They're going to land in the old, abandoned airfield near our high school. They want to take two students with them to Mitrax. Mitrax? asked Paul. Yes, it must be the name of their planet. This Friday? added Sona. Exactly. During the family teacher's meeting, he's going to hypnotize them with a spray and take them on his spaceship. Today is Thursday. We only have a day to do something, exclaimed Paul. I have an idea, I said. What? asked my friends. We can try to find the hypnotizing spray and take it away from him. It can only be in two places, somewhere in his house or somewhere in the science lab. Good idea. This afternoon, after he goes home, we can look for the spray in the lab. If the spray isn't there, tomorrow morning we won't go to school. We'll get into his house in some way and take the spray added Paul. But we don't even know where he lives, objected Sona. Well, we'll find out, I said. So we want to steal his hypnotizing spray. Maybe Matt can help us. He has a key that opens all doors, Sona said. Sona's brother Matt is a policeman. Are you sure he'll give it to you? I don't think he'll believe this story, I said. Of course not. How can he believe something like this? I obviously have to steal the key. I hope he doesn't notice. Stealing a passepartout from the police is a big crime, Paul commented. Yes, but it's the only way to enter where we want. Don't worry. I'll be careful. Gee, Mr. Hans's is so friendly and handsome. It's difficult to believe that he's a horrible green alien. Well, this afternoon, I'll get the key. Remember, don't say anything to anyone, I said. This is our secret. Okay, don't worry. I hope everything will be okay, Paul said. We went to our afternoon classes. I couldn't wait for the day to finish. I was nervous and excited. 
I constantly thought of the day before. I remembered when he took off his face. Behind that blonde hair, there was a bald, green head. Behind those brown eyes, two red ones. And behind the nose, nothing. I shivered. After school, I went with Sona to her house. Paul, instead, stayed at school to make sure that Clyreg went home. When Sona and I arrived at her house, there was no one there. I hope Matt didn't take the key with him, said Sona. We went in. Sona went to her brother's room. I heard her open many drawers. I crossed my fingers. Here it is, Sona exclaimed. Oh, great. Now let's go back to school, I said. Wait, my mom will be back soon. I have to leave her a note. I'll tell her I'm at the library, Sona said. We went back to school. Paul was sitting on the steps. Has Clyreg left? I asked. Yes. We can go in, Paul answered. We went up to the science lab. When we arrived, we noticed that the door was open. Someone was whistling inside. Oh, no. It's the janitor, Paul whispered. Let's hide in the bathroom, Sona suggested. It's already been cleaned, so he won't come in. We quickly entered the girl's bathroom and hid. After some time, the janitor walked away. We heard him go down the stairs. Okay, now, Paul said. We entered the lab and looked around. We opened the chemical cabinet with Matt's passepartout and examined every container. There weren't any sprays or strange bottles. So we tried the refrigerator. What's this? I said. Inside the refrigerator, there was a spray without a label. It was very difficult to open, and it had a bizarre phosphorescence. Wow, it's probably Clyreg's hypnotizing spray. But how can we be sure? Paul asked. We have to be sure that it's the right one. An error could be fatal. I have an idea. I can try the spray on my dog, Fred. Fred hates taking baths, and especially eating leftovers. I'll spray him. If he doesn't protest, we have the right spray, I said. Excellent. Please phone me after, and tell me the results. Paul said. I want to know, too, Sona added. We carefully went out of the lab and left the building. When I arrived home, I prepared a big bath for Fred. Fred! Freddy! I called. The dog was in the garden. When he saw me with a big basin full of water, he barked and howled. Ah, he ran inside his doghouse. Silly dog, I thought. I took the spray, went to the doghouse and sprayed Fred. Then I called him again, and I pointed towards the water in the basin. What a surprise. Fred calmly came out of the doghouse and jumped into the water. After Fred's bath, I went to the refrigerator and took out some leftovers. I put them in his dish and gave it to him. Food time, Fred, I said. Fred saw the leftovers and didn't protest. He started eating. It was incredible. I immediately phoned Sona 
and gave her the good news. Then I phoned Paul. Hi, Paul. It's me. We have the right spray. Fred has been completely hypnotized. Great. Listen, can you come to my house now? I need to talk to you. There was something strange in his voice. Paul, are you okay? I asked. Yes. I'm fine, I'll tell you. Please come. It's important. I took the bus and arrived at Paul's house. He was alone, as always. He was in his room with his cat, Apollo, in his arms. I want to go to Metrax with Clyreg, Paul said. What? Yes, I want to go to Mitrax with Clyreg, Paul repeated. Are you kidding? You're crazy. No, I'm not crazy. Look at my life. My mother doesn't love me. She went away and never wants to see me. How do you think I feel? My father is always working. He doesn't care if I'm here or in Timbuktu. He only cares about his young, blonde secretaries. At school, everyone thinks I'm strange. You're my only true friend in class. Seema, I'm not happy here. Try to understand. This world isn't for me. I don't like my life. I want to test my destiny and see what happens to me. Honestly, I really don't think that Clyreg wants to hurt us students. How do you know? I asked angrily, shocked at what he was saying. He doesn't give me that impression. I'm sure the aliens just want to study us. I feel I can trust them. Also, you know I love space. I've always been interested in astronomy and alien life. This is a fantastic opportunity to see life on another planet, in another galaxy. This is my dream. This opportunity will never exist again. If aliens come to Earth at the next intergalactic meeting, they certainly won't come to our town again. Listening to Paul, I started to understand his point of view. But it was terrible to think that Paul didn't have anyone. No one really cared about him. I was very sad. Running away to another planet isn't the right solution to your problems, I said but I've tried to talk to my father about my problems. I've tried many times. Nothing has changed. Listen, I want to go to Mitrax. I feel it's the right thing for me. Something inside is pushing me to go. Maybe going to Mitrax was the best thing for Paul although I still couldn't believe it. If you're convinced. But I'll miss you. A lot. I'll never see you again, I said. Nothing is forever. You will see me again. I promise. Don't make promises you can't keep. I said, with tears in my eyes. Believe me, Jenny. Sooner or later, when the next intergalactic door opens, I'll return, and I'll have many new things to tell you. Listen, he continued. We must organize our plan for tomorrow evening. When Clyreg takes the two students to the science lab, he'll open the refrigerator, but he won't find the spray. At that point, he won't be able to do anything, because he can't touch us. If he touches us, 
He'll electrocute us, Paul explained. Then he won't be able to study us anymore. I interrupted. Exactly. So, when he sees that his mission has failed, the only thing he can do is go to the airfield and leave with his spaceship. He can't stay any longer because he can't miss his spaceship. And the spaceship can't wait for him. I won't come to the family teacher's meeting. I'll wait for Mr. Hans at the airfield. I sadly looked at Paul. Good luck. I'll wait for you, I said. Paul picked up Apollo and gave him to me. I want you to keep him. Take care of him for me. He came closer to me. For the first time, we kissed. My heart pounded. Oh, Paul, thanks for Apollo. Thank you very much. I stroked the black cat, and he purred. I went back home and passed by Dana's house to give her the passe partout. That night, I didn't sleep. I thought about the next day, about Paul's decision, about Clyreg. Apollo mewed in the darkness. I won't come to the family teacher's meeting. I'll wait for Mr. Hans at the airfield. On Friday morning, I got up early. I felt very tense. The day proceeded slowly. During the morning, the principal came to remind us of the meeting. Don't forget that this evening there's the family teacher's meeting. I hope to see all of you with your parents. Sure, I thought. And during the meeting, one of your teachers will try to kidnap two students and take them to a mysterious planet. When the school day finished, I went to the rainbow for some ice cream with Paul and Sona. Paul told Sona about his decision. She was obviously very surprised and disappointed. Those moments we passed together were very special. I will never forget that last afternoon with Paul. Our friendship seemed stronger than before. We felt more united because of our separation. Finally, after dinner, my parents and I walked to school. We sat down in the auditorium, and the meeting started. At one point, I saw Mr. Hans's get up and go towards Sona's family. I saw him whisper something to Sona's parents, and then to Sona. She got up from her chair and followed him. Together, they walked towards Stephen's family. Steve is another one of my classmates. I'm sure Clareg chose him because Paul was absent. In fact, I noticed him looking for Paul. Steve, Sona, and Mr. Hans left the auditorium. So he didn't choose me, I thought. I looked at my watch. 9.05. 25 more minutes. Suddenly, I had an irresistible impulse. I wanted to see what was happening. I got up. Sima, where are you going? My mom asked. I'm going to the science lab. Don't worry, I said, and I quickly walked away. The door of the lab was closed. Inside, I heard Mr. Hans opening the fridge. I imagined his anger. Oh, no, he exclaimed. Where is it? Where is what, Clyreg? Sona asked. Are you talking about the hypnotizing spray? You lost, Clyreg, she exclaimed triumphantly. What? You know... Clyreg was shocked. What spray? What are you saying? said Steve, 
who didn't know anything about it. What courage Dana has, I thought. Mr. Hans had the power to electrocute her, if he wanted. It was stupid to make him angry, but in the end, it seems that Paul was right. Clyreg wasn't really a bad alien. Well, I don't think you need us anymore, Sona said. The door opened and she walked out. Come on, Steve, everything's okay. Let's go back to the meeting. Then Clyreg came out. He seemed confused and helpless. I looked at my watch. Clyreg, it's 917. Go. Don't miss your spaceship. I said, almost with compassion. Clyreg looked at me, even more surprised. Then he went to the fire escape exit and ran away. At that moment, I thought of Paul. I followed Clyreg down the fire escape stairs and out of the building. Our school is very close to the old airfield, so Clyreg and I reached it at 9.24. The spaceship was already there, waiting for Clyreg. Its portal was open, but all the lights were off. The aliens from Mitrax didn't want anyone to see them. Paul was there too. When he saw Clyreg, he ran towards him. Clyreg, listen, I want to come with you. Take me with you. You can study me. I know you won't hurt me. Clyreg was literally shocked. Come then, Paul. Hurry, he said, recovering from his amazement. Paul, I shouted. Sima. He ran to me and we embraced. This crazy adventure has finally finished. Fortunately, everything ended well for everyone, Paul said. Think about me sometimes, I said. I'll always think of you. And remember, I'll be back. Paul, Clyreg shouted. He was on the stairs of the spaceship. The portal is closing. Have fun in Mitrax. You space lover, I said, laughing and crying at the same time. Paul went up the stairs, and the portal closed behind him. The spaceship lights turned on, and it silently went up into the dark night sky. I watched it disappear into the blackness. Then I hurried back to school. My parents were still at the meeting with everyone else. No one seemed to suspect anything. Sona and Steve sat calmly near their parents. I, too, went back to my mother and father, smiling innocently. Today, six months have passed. Everyone at school now knows the truth about Mr. Hans although not everyone totally believes my story. We have a new science teacher. Her name is Miss Lundberg, and for the moment she seems normal. Sona and I have been to visit Mr. John a few times, and his relationship with our class has really improved. He seems a happier person, and this pleases me a lot. Steve is now Sona's boyfriend, and they make a nice couple. I still have the hypnotizing spray. I keep it hidden, although sometimes I use it on Fred when he needs a bath. Apollo is now a member of our family. Fred is a little jealous of him, but they're usually friends. I told my parents the entire story. They seemed to believe me, especially because no one can find Paul. In the beginning, his father looked for him, but he soon stopped worrying. Sometimes Dana and I talk about Clyreg and our adventure. We remember Paul. On many evenings, alone in my garden, 
I look up at the sky and think about him. Good night, Paul, wherever you are. See you soon. Extremely embarrassed. Don't worry. Since you're here, please come in. I climbed down the tree. Paul was very nervous. Come on, Seema. Let's go away before it's too late. No, Paul, I am going in. But I went towards Mr. Jan's front door, so Paul followed. The teacher opened the door and made us sit down in his living room 